Welcome back, everybody. Today we're going over the Dan Wesson Silverback that you see here and that you've seen throughout the intro. Uh, this gun right here is actually going to be the first Dan Wesson review that I've done. However, I've shot a bunch of them. You guys know I hang out with uh, Suits Zero Zero from time to time, and he's got quite the collection of Dan Wesson firearms. Uh, obviously, you shoot them, you're going to really like them. These are excellent guns, have a really nice reputation in the 1911 community. And uh, this one here is one of their new offerings. I think this one's new for 2015, maybe the end of 2014. Not exactly sure on that. Don't quote me. But what we're going to do next is uh, do a little bit more shooting and then take a look at some of the close-up details of the pistol, what makes it sort of a unique offering from Dan Wesson, and then uh, come back to the end and let you know what we think of it overall. We're gonna see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this gun with a uh, sort of upscale 1911, if you will. You expect very good accuracy. So we're gonna try a couple different loads in this gun and uh, see what we get. We got the target down range at 25 yards. We're gonna be firing some uh, Minuteman munitions ammo and uh, just 230 grain stuff. Uh, see what kind of accuracy we can get out of that. It's full metal jacket. And then we'll try some uh, Hornady critical duty, which a lot of people say is pretty accurate stuff. Uh, we shall see. Um, I suppose less gabbin, more shooting is the answer at this time. So let's uh, see what we can do. Let me lower this down a little bit. I can already tell it's a little too high. All right. Let's do it. We're using the uh, CTK Precision Rest. For those of you guys that haven't seen my review on it, you can check it out. It's a pretty cool little, little item here. We'll see what we can do. Not too bad from where I'm standing now. It's four rounds of fire, four rounds of critical duty. Just keep everything the same. The last shot, I feel like I jacked that up, but we'll see here. Uh, we'll go the target right above it. You can definitely feel the plus P in this crap. <laughs> We'll get into some of the details on the pistol. The first thing you notice, and you've probably already noticed just from looking at the intro, is that this thing is a excellent looking pistol. It has nice polished sides here on the uh, side of the slide. Definitely dig it. The two-tone finish just looks good. I think it's the only two-tone gun in the Dan Wesson lineup, so uh, my guess is they're probably going to do a few more because it does look good and draws people to it. Now, it comes with two eight-round magazines made in the USA. It has nice memory, uh, or I should say, uh, base pads on there, so that way when you drop it out there in the field or something like that, you're not going to have to worry about damaging your magazine. We've had no issues at all in terms of reliability from the gun. It's fed everything we've uh, fed it, regardless of the magazine, and we ran plenty through these mags. It worked just fine, so happy to report that there. The mainspring housing on the pistol, as well as the front strap, have a really nice checkering on there. Uh, my guess is it's about 30 or 25 lines per inch, so not too aggressive, pretty medium checkering. Uh, some folks like it a little bit more aggressive, probably myself included, but it does give you nice uh, firm grip on the pistol and keeps it from moving under recoil. Now, one thing we should note on that is that this pistol here is in 45, however, it is available in 10 millimeter as well. So in that, with that 10 millimeter round, you're going to need uh, as much grip as you can get on there when firing it because it's a snappy little cartridge for sure.
The grips it comes with are full thickness 1911 grips. We'll see if my camera will actually focus there so you can see that they're not exactly the skinniest. I know uh, some folks out there with small hands are going to want to put some slim ones on there. Easily done, but for folks like me with pretty big hands, um, it feels just fine in the hand. And uh, one reason outside of those G10 grips is also because the trigger guard here is undercut. So it lets you get pretty high up on there and uh, combine that with this nice beaver tail grip safety. And uh, you have no worries of slide bite. You can get as high as you want. Closer to that bore line which uh, helps keep the gun on track under under recoil safety on the pistol is left side only it has nice serrations on there and it engages positively both in the uh, fire and safe positions i'll stop talking and let you guys actually listen to it here for a second it's not overly difficult though so when you're in the uh, fire firing grip you can easily manipulate it both up and down since there's no safety on this side, the right side's pretty bare. One thing we noticed there is that it does have the uh, recess cut on the slide stop and a lowered and flared ejection port for good extraction and ejection on there. Uh, like I said before, reliability has been great on this pistol, so that's just one of the features that's going to add to it. Those of us that like 1911s, uh, one of the reasons we like them is the triggers. Now this one here, as you can see, is very exceptionally fit. I'm pushing up and down on it. There's no vertical movement in it at all, which is really nice. We'll show you the trigger pull here in just a second. You're going to have a little bit of play on that trigger. The trigger's serrated as well. One thing you notice when you put your pad on there and a little bit of play, but as soon as you hit that wall, it is exceptionally crisp and the reset is great as well. Show you that really short and you're immediately back on target. There's just no complaining about the trigger. It's as good as any of the 1911s I own. The sights on the pistol are three dot night sights. On the rear here, we have the two dot system and it's adjustable for both windage and elevation. You should also note on there, it does have a nice ledge. So that way, if you want to do one handed manipulations or anything like that, if you have malfunctions, you certainly can do so. Up here on the uh, front sight, also a night sight, as you can see with Trijicon inserts. The difference between the front and the rear though that I like is that the front has a nice white circle around it, whereas the rear just has the tritium inserts. So when you're looking down at it, it really draws your eye to the front sight for quick target acquisition. Disassembling the firearms, pretty simple overall. It does have a GI guide rod, which you're going to see in a second, so it makes it pretty simple and basic stuff. It also comes with a uh, bushing wrench. Uh, the gun does for disassembly. Of course, after a while, you'd think that the gun would become a little bit easier to disassemble, and I'm here to tell you this uh, bushing is a match bushing, obviously, along with the match barrel, and it is fit extremely tight, like really, really tight. So, I'm going to tell you, it's not all that easy to disassemble in terms of force-wise, but one good thing about that is obviously it aids in accuracy. So I'd rather have a, a bushing that's a little bit on the tight side and uh, have to use a tool to disassemble it. So I'm not going to complain. You can see there, we'll line that up. Now the recessed uh, slide stop here particularly, at least in the first few times you disassemble it, is pretty tight. You can use the edge of the magazine there to sort of pop it. I gotta line it up a little bit better. And there you go. Pull that sucker out. And let our slide go home now. One thing I should point out there is that everything on this gun is hand fit, so it's really, really nice. Um, you can see it was even somewhat difficult for me to pull the slide stop out. That's because it's fit that tight. I'll let that go home. See, really nice fit on the bushing have our match grade barrel. You'll see it's got a nice wide mouth there for feeding hollow points, any sort of defensive rounds that you want to use, or hunting rounds uh, if you're using the gun for that purpose. Taking a look here on the slide, you'll see that it is a Series 70 design, so you're not going to see any sort of firing pin block. I absolutely prefer Series 70 with 1911s. I don't think Series 70s are unsafe at all in terms of drop safeness. I see no issue for a Series 80s gun, one man's opinion anyway. So that's uh, the gun taken apart. Reassembly is obviously the same in the opposite order. By now you guys probably can tell that I do like this gun a good bit. 100% uh, reliability is what we asked for in all of our guns here. Uh, we got that out of this one, so no complaints at all there. 
one thing I change, and folks oftentimes ask me that about guns that I review positively, is I do like an extended magwell, but that's really kind of a personal preference. It's not a performance thing at all. This one here on the frame does have some beveling in there to age and reloads, but I like the big wide ones. Uh, maybe because I'm a sloppy reloader or something like that. I don't know, but I do prefer them. Um, in terms of details that we haven't mentioned about the gun, all steel construction, both the slide and the frame, are made from 416 steel, forged 416 steel. There are no MIM parts at all on the gun, uh, at all. All made in the United States. All the parts are made in the United States. And uh, like we mentioned, everything is tight. So if you're used to, say, like a, a 1911 from like Springfield, like entry level gun, which are good guns, I'm not knocking them. Um, when you first go to disassemble this gun, as you guys saw when we were doing it a little bit, you will probably think you're doing something wrong or that you forgot a step or something like that because you really do have to use a little bit of elbow grease to take it apart. And that's a good thing. That means it's really, really well fit. If you push down on the barrel, stuff like that, it's tight. There's no movement at all, which is awesome. Aids in really good accuracy. So those are all really good things about the gun. Um, price point. Now, that's one thing folks always talk about when you talk about Dan West. And it's uh, a gun that folks who have experience with higher end 1911s, the ones in the $3,000 and up range, folks who will handle these will always say that Dan Wesson, or not always, but usually say that Dan Wessons are a great bang for your buck in the 1911 world. Uh, this one here, I believe the MSRP is like 1800 ish somewhere in that range. I've looked around online today. Uh, street price seems to be about the $1,500 range, plus or minus $100, depending on where you look. So it's not cheap. It's not an entry level 1911 at all, but it doesn't perform like one either. Um, so I think with the forged frame, forged slide, all the hand fitting that goes into it, uh, great fit and finish. The finish on the frame here for you guys, if I didn't mention it already, is a nice nitride finish, so very durable. It's going to wear well. I think uh, it's just an excellent gun and priced really about right for what it is. You get a good bit of 1911 for the money. If you guys have any questions about this gun or anything else we didn't talk about here in the video, by all means, post below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing, and I hope to see you in the next video.